Folks, welcome back to Jameson's Repair Shop. I'm in here just pretending I'm driving around as a passenger. So, uh, again, welcome. This will be an uh, episode that I'll be taking the interior of, of this vehicle. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do a, a kind of an overhead shot. That's the plan with a time lapse. And then uh, sections of where I want to show how I'm taking something apart, I'll take another camera and I'll go in and do that and I'll just when I do editing I'll just interrupt the uh, time lapse with those things what I've done so far of course I cleaned out all the miscellaneous parts I have them on the back of the trunk lid there um, mostly it's just like trim off the bottom of the seat the driver's seat and uh, some of the trim out of the dash which I had gone ahead and done which uh, I didn't video sorry about that so that's what this video will be, is just cleaning out the uh, interior. So there's a lot of work to be done, so I had better get at it. And uh, hang in there, we'll get her done. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is take this uh, passenger seat out. And if all goes well, it'll only be four nuts underneath. Um, so let's go underneath and have a look. I'll grab my gloves first. There we are. Now I have gone ahead and put a little deep creep on them, because... I didn't want this to be uh, right anywhere my light go. I just had it and a light. All right. So there we are. There's the four bolts. And those are studs that go right up into the bottom of the seat. They're threaded on the other end, so they may come out. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So uh, that's the first step. So let me get these bolts out and uh, we'll get the pull pull seat. Okay, there we are. Two of the studs came out with the nut on the outside, on the outer edge of the seat, and the inner ones came off, the nuts came off the studs. <clears throat> they were covered in oil from the engine. So now we'll pull, we'll yank this out. There may be, I don't, there's no power in this, so there shouldn't be any wires. But we'll know, I've never had the seat out, so we'll find out. Okay, one seat out. <laughs> hey, not bad under here. There's a, a dime. I'll keep that. Making money. Making it pay. <laughs> so, I'm not going to vacuum this all up just yet. I'll do it uh, when I start pulling some more stuff out. Uh, but if I find it too much of a mess, I'll vacuum it out. Yeah, I know, I said I wasn't going to vacuum it out, but I'm not a big fan of working on a whole bunch of dirt. So I just went ahead and took the vacuum. I'll keep it here, because I'm sure the other side's going to have a little... I did have that seat out over there, that driver's seat, and I did clean it when I got the car. So it won't be uh, as bad, but this wasn't bad anyway for an old car. It's laying around this many years. All right, so I think... I'm going to pop the back seat out because I can get at it easy now. And then, ah, no. Let's go ahead and do the front seat on the driver's side. And then it's gone. And then I have access to the console and I can get in there easily and pull that uh, back seat out. There she is. Yeah, like I say, I'd already vacuumed this all out one time, so it's got a little debris in it, so I'll continue to clean it up, give it another quick vacuum. Okay, that's gone. Vacuumed up. Let's get this back seat, these back seats out, and then we can start. I'll just start wherever I start. <laughs> all right, let's get these out. Uh, 
Okay, there's the back seat out. That seat's in bad shape. You can see the rust that came out of the front of that uh, lower frame on that seat. So anyway, they're just hooked on these these little horns here that stick up. And I just put my my feet against here, my toes against there, and I push with my knees against the front of the seat. And then when I started pushing on this one, I could feel it crunching, so I went to the other side. But anyway, I have a spare seat frame that's in the, the green 65 parts car. It's a lot better shape. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better shape. So anyway, let's move on. We'll get the, the backs off. And they're just, uh, and I may not have put the screws back in. I didn't. <laughs> so that was pretty easy. But I'll show you what holds them in. There's these uh, clips here. So I believe there was two, if I remember correctly, in each seat. And I think right here, I'm not 100% sure, I think that's where you would put the seat belts in if it had been equipped with seat belts. But it wasn't. All right, so let me grab the other one and we'll vacuum this up a bit and go at it. There's the back seat all out. Still have the armrest to come off. And of course the side panel. This one's already taken off. This one should be easy because I've taken the door handle off or the armrest off. So it's just a few screws. Um, it's got some <laughs> extra wiring that came for free with this car. <laughs> I know they must have been having trouble with the top because it was a set of switches. I don't know if it's here in the ashtray it's somewhere yeah right here they had set it up with a set of manual switches I don't think it was ideal but hey it probably worked for them and that's what they needed at the time they didn't have Nick's uh, bypass button which this car will have uh, once uh, once it goes back together I like that Nick thanks all right there's a few markings in here can't really read them you might just might be able to do the stampings on the just below the package tray. Uh, I wanted to mention too under the seat the the build sheet's not there under the back seat. I know that it's not there now. It was a small fragment of it was was under the seat when I got the car because when I took it out before that's kind of what I was looking for. But as you can see, this is such a bad condition that it. Uh, there was not, you couldn't even read it. I knew what it was because it had the, those uh, printer, um, the little holes for the print, those uh, dot matrix printers, uh, the little tracks, feed tracks. So it was the build sheet, but there was only like a little fragment and it was all browned and there was one number I could read and that was it. So I, I don't even know where it is now. It was so tender, I just got rid of it. Anyway, so that's why I, don't, I haven't found a build sheet unless there's another one in this car. There was nothing under the front seats, I can tell you that. So let's get back at her. So I think I'll, rather than continuing back that way, I'm going to get this trim off. And I believe I've taken the trim off the front on the other side, yeah. So the side trim for the back side trim needs to come off. So I want to get the, I was thinking about taking the carpet out, but I'm still not sure because it's a nice thing to lay on when you're taking the, the dash out. So let's get these off, we'll get the console out, and go from there. Alright, so there's just some Phillips. I'll do a quick run, I'll take a few out. I mean, just some Phillips screws. If I can get them out, they're in there. I don't want to strip them. There's one there. Alright, so let me get on this so I can put some more pressure on and we'll get them out. They get right up to there. Yeah, so I'll get this done. Well, that first trim was a little bit uh, tricky on that last screw. Um, these are the trim screws of these small headed dome. They're tapered with a dome top uh, Phillips. So I'm just going to take this other last piece of trim off over here and it fell off 
on its own. That screw wasn't holding anything. Yeah, so I'm glad I have that spare Thunderbird because a lot of this trim, these back trim backer plates are in bad shape on the bottom. The rest is probably fine. Well, there you go. Man, one little screw. Sure makes a hard life. Anyway, I got it out. Let's get to see what's going on down in here. I'll continue on. Get some of this trim off and stuff. There's a couple screws there. I, I've never done this before, so uh, I did watch uh, John's stuff. And my memory isn't as good. I should have went and reviewed his. I did review Nick's uh, assembly or assembly and installation uh, on the dashboard, so I have a, a pretty good understanding of that. But the console, I thought I knew. But thinking you know and knowing are two different things. So I should have gone and reviewed John's because he, he had that all out. All right, I'll continue on. I'll muddle through. Okay, I'm going after this side piece here, and this is the screw that was the most furthest in way in there near the near the firewall, and then there was another screw out here. I I don't know for sure if these are all original screws. These look like they probably are. So, um, for me to say this screw belongs there, that screw belongs there, uh, I don't know if these screws are correct. So I'm going to kind of skip by that. I'll have to uh, figure it out when I go put it back together. I'd like to buy one of those screw kits or bolt kits for the for this. And it's all labeled for you. Alright, there's two screws that came from up in here. And they look to be the right screws. And then I'm going to take the uh, heater controls out too. And there's screw there and the uh, screw there. I think there were supposed to be four in it, but some are missing. Okay, this is the heater... Or vent controls and the clock uh, washers and all that I just I took the uh, I'll grab one here the little uh, trim wedges off our um, knobs off saving the screws with them and then it just slides down and then I can take those two screws out in there to get at the rest of that to get this piece of the of the console out but first I gotta undo the wiring and everything here so I'll let me get that done and uh, we'll continue on. Okay, I wanted to just cover this uh, speaker area and where the uh, controls were for the vents and the windshield wipers. Uh, now they have that case off. You can see right here how these speakers were put in with uh, wing nuts and spacers. And I believe Nick was talking about that on his uh, dash assembly. Uh, video Nick at uh, Vintage Thunderbird repair and also he talked about the gaffers tape holding this uh, the the nut plates in and that's what's on this this is an original original I don't think it's ever been taken apart before uh, it's on both sides I don't let me see it yeah so the gaffers tape is there so uh, yeah uh, I know Nick didn't have a speaker in when he did his but there's how it's put in. There's one. There's four of those uh, wing nuts with spacers all the way around that speaker. I just thought I'd add that. There we go. That's all off. Uh, these ones had. These look to be factory screws, and that's the length of these ones. They're uh, tapered with a. They're chromed or stainless. I'm not sure. Probably stainless. And then they have uh, their Phillips as well. So I'm just going to tuck them in my screw box. And I wanted to point out this. This is why. When you, it's tempting to pull on this lower piece, but you'll break this off. So if you're doing this work, be careful. Don't yank on that. You got you got to take that that section off for the heater or the the wiper controls and the clock area. And then there's just the two screws underneath this this front panel right here. Yeah. So you can break this fairly easily, I'm sure. So don't go yanking on that. If that helps any, hopefully, anybody's doing this work. Now, I'll just keep going. I have a couple of screws I can't get out that I'm going to have to... One on the other side over there, on the lower console. And then I'm going to dig in around up there and I'll get rid of this console. Alright, just about ready to get the, the console out. Um, it's loosened up in the back. So it should pop off there. I did have trouble with a screw on that side but I got it out. 
Now there's just near as I can see is that there's two screws left up in here. One right there and there's one over there if you can see it. I'll get those out and I don't see anything else. So I, let me get those out of the way and we'll pull this console out. Okay, there was a third screw way down by the throttle, where the gas pedal went. Anyway, we're tight ready to get this out. Hopefully this will, hopefully there's no other surprises. Wiggle around the uh, heater part right here. Yeah. Ah, oh, there might be some wiring in here, I'll bet you. That's catching. Yep, there's a wiring for the, uh, wiring for the, uh, cigarette lighter and all that jazz. So that's going to have to come out. The cigarette lighter I can just turn out. I hope I'm not blocking you. Yeah, so let's set the wiring here. I forgot all about it. Of course, it makes sense that the ashtray and cigarette lighter are going to have a uh, there it is there's that fuse John was talking about in his video so it only makes sense that they'll have uh, lights in them all right that's held in there by a clip or all right just uh See if I can do this. I grabbed a couple of pairs of pliers here, needle loads, and a pair of just a straight edge. Pull this plug apart. Hopefully, it's not corroded too bad. Most of the plugs have been coming apart pretty good, I have to say. There she comes. They're all in good condition. Like, uh, there's not corroded at all so far. All right, so this should do it. If there's no other bar or any other surprises, which I don't see anything else in there. There she comes. One console. Uh, I'll set it aside. A lot of this extra wiring. <laughs> well, like I said, they needed to do, did what they needed to do to get it running. I'm sure it must have been a... A real pain at the top wasn't working right for them. All right, so now let's uh, let's tackle that steering column over there. It has to come out anyway. And I think I got enough stuff stripped off now. I can get at it. All right, I'm underneath the dash here. On each side of the column, I don't know if you can see this or not, but right here, put my finger where you can see it. There's a bolt there. And on the opposite side, you might not be able, there's one there that has to come off. This uh, sort of sh uh, shaped bracket has to come off. And they're half inch and also, oh, I'm upside down here slowly. There we go. And these are half inch as well. All the gasket the plate and everything on the for the firewall. And there's a bunch of wires that has to be dis disconnected, of course. So let me set you up on the tripod, and uh, I know you won't be able to see much, but uh, we'll see what we can we can see what we can make of this video.
there's the old steering column out. <clears throat> Had a little uh, struggle with it, but that's my own fault. <clears throat> Excuse me. That pivot uh, bracket that's out under the by the steering box had to come off. Well, I felt it had to come off, so it goes on up here. So I'm just going to tuck that back on so I don't lose it. And it had a cotter pin in it and a castle nut right here and a washer. I mean, I don't know about putting that on the right way. We'll figure it out when I put it back in. <coughs> What the issue was is the uh, shift lever arm, <coughs> excuse me, the shift lever arm and this, well, the way I was doing it, wouldn't come through the hole together. But anyway, so then there's these bolts here. There's a spring that goes on this mechanism for the, slide, the, the swing away wheel. And that's what all this is. And there's a spring that goes on there. I got that. <coughs> The bolts that go in the side of the column are these ones. <clears throat> I don't know if you see them or not. They have a point on them, so they're special for that. And they both seem to be correct. So they would go in there, and there's a washer that's supposed to be on those too. I believe they had a, uh, yeah, maybe not. I was gonna say they had a, <clears throat> one of these uh, star washers on it, but uh, inside star, but I don't think I don't see where there's any of them. They're for the, uh, man, the firewall bolts for that, that gasket had, uh, had wash, uh, these washers on them like that. And I'll keep them all together. And there's a spring. And it looks like someone may have broken one of these springs at one time and replaced it. I don't know. There's a, there was a part on the floor. I'll save it. Oh, yeah, here's everything that goes on that. Yeah, there was. There was these uh, washers like that. And then there's a flat washer. Yeah, so I probably just dropped it off somewhere. I'll put them back in so they don't get lost. Because those are specific, specific for that. All right, here. This. We'll do it this way because I'm sure that's how that one is. Yep. All right. And that's pretty much it. There was the wire harness, uh, pinched the little clips together and come out. That wire harness is in nice shape. It needs a little cleaning, but it's not corroded or anything. And yeah, there was a plug on this uh, switch here. It's a vacuum switch. I suspect this is for the, uh, to release the park brakes, but I'm not sure. I'll look it up. And that's it. That's the steering column. Out. So I'll set this aside. Now I think I was trying to get that the dash cluster out. Well, actually, the car can go together with that on there. So or the dash can come out with that on, as far as I know. So maybe I'll tackle tackle the dash. There's not a lot other than wiring left holding it. So um, the dash ones, there's two bolts. All right, let me show you. So the dash has uh, these two, two bolts, one on each side, on the outside, at the firewall, top of the firewall, just under the windshield. And I'm going to have to take that kick panel off inside there on the, by the park brake because that's in the way of the brackets I'll show you right here this bracket there's a bracket up here that the uh, I don't know if you see it or not yeah right there that the dash sits on this bracket right here so that'll have to come out so let me get this done and like I say that uh, kick panel there has to come off it's in the way
the camera set up to pull this dash out finally. I had to uh, reinsert the, uh, oops, put in the uh, odometer, speedometer, and the gauges back in, just a couple of screws because it was all over the place. Uh, so I'm going to go in now and pull the dash out, and I have a bench set up with a piece of carpet on it. I'm going to set the dash on it, and uh, we'll take a quick look at it. And there's another thing I want to point out in here before I leave this video, um, something that I find strange, uh, and I'm probably going to need your help on if anybody else has seen this, but I'll talk to you about that in a second. So let's get the dash out. I'm not saying it wasn't a struggle, that's for sure. This job here, it took me about two and a half hours to get this off and out. And really, it's a two-person job at points, not all the time, but they're, like I broke a, there was a broken uh, backing plate on it for the nut, for the, had a lot of trouble getting one bolt out because uh, it was spinning. Finally got it out. It was rusted as well. So, it, it really, you should get an extra set of hands, if possible, for, port, for parts of this. Now, this dash is quite heavy, uh, mostly because of this, the, the instrument panel. All right, let's go. All right. So, I'll get it up on the bench. I couldn't imagine doing this <laughs> with a hard top. You would really need two people if you're doing this on a hard top. Uh, this convertible makes it easy to, you can just stand up in place and go, but holy smokes, to do it with one person on a hard top, I couldn't imagine. All right, let's get down the bench. Okay, there she's up on the bench. And I'll uh, deal with all this in a bit in time. I'm going to leave it as one assembly right now. And I was gonna, I was trying to get all like, uh, I was having trouble getting it out, uh, getting that the screw, or the bolt rather that was through the firewall that I have have an issue with. So I tried to take out the uh, <clears throat> instrument bezel here, but what happened was, I kind of gave up on it. Oh, don't rip in those. That's the tape. Go easy. There's a wire right there. This one. It's pinched underneath this plate here. Well, if it's pinched or not, but it's 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 in behind it. Now, whether it's supposed to be like that or not, I have no idea. But it goes, it just, uh, that light of the way. All right. It just goes to a spade connector right there, but I couldn't get it off because there's no room to push it because it's underneath that, and I didn't feel like taking it out. I just put two bolts back in, called it a day on that. So that's it, that's the dash out. And I'm gonna show you one more thing. All right, hang on, it's in the car. So I was under the impression that these Thunderbirds were all vacuum controlled heaters and everything. And uh, this is the heater control that's in this one. And there's not a vacuum control, it's all manual. So I'm not sure what happened there. I mean, it looks like it's original because, I mean, to convert that over from vacuum to this would have been a big undertaking. So really, I mean, all these are all runoff cables, not vacuum. Uh, anybody that's familiar with under the dash of these more than I am, let me know if you've ever seen this in the Thunderbirds. It's a strange one to me. I, I, I've seen lots of you know work done on the vacuum controllers and everything, but this one is clearly not a vacuum controller. So anyway, that's something, a question for the crowd. Next video, because this will be the end of this video, we'll be taking out the brake pedal support and all that stuff. Park brake, all the wire harness. Sorry, I'm going too fast and the finger's in the way and it's focusing on it. Let me hear my pointer here. And, okay, the wire harness and the ductwork for the heater business, and I already took the bolts off on the other side but I believe there's a couple in here heater core will come out and I'll be working back with a wire harness and stripping the wire harnesses basically what I'm saying is this will all be oh 
this will all be a uh, bare um, firewall on the inside. And John, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm on the top now where I can see it. What there is on the top of this, and you I think you already know that, but there was a little clip. It was like a hose clamp kind of thing on the top. See if I can get that pulled out. Just one of those uh, spring ones on that park cable, just in case you uh, didn't have that or didn't know it was there. All right, guys, there she is. And like I said about doing this work, if this were a hard top car, holy moly, this would have been a lot harder. <laughs> but I'm glad it's not. Not that I don't like the hard tops, but uh, that's a lot of work if you had to get in and out and not be able to stand straight up. All right, guys. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching Jameson's Repair Shop on this uh, Thunderbird restoration. See you in the next one.